All right, good morning. Oh, we're almost awake. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, as you, as Jenna just said, we are starting a new series today called The Season of Obedience. Um, it was interesting, I was thinking about this series and I realized that our year began with obedience <laughs> and we're ending our year with obedience. And it's amazing how all of this in between in this transition, I've just seen that in the lives of everyone um, as we've grown and as we've come together and as we've just sought after God in this season. And I'm just thankful for all of you <laughs> in the midst of all of this. And so I'm Pastor Stephanie. I'm the associate pastor here at Grace. And I just want to welcome you here today. Um, as we start this series, today we are talking about Zechariah. He's been in the Bible. He is the father of John the Baptist who came to prepare the way for Jesus. Okay, and so I always like to start, for me, when I tell the Christmas story with him because when Mary was told that Jesus was coming, that she was the one, right, she goes to see Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth, her cousin, <laughs> right? And so it's just an important part of this story, as we start. And so we're going to jump right in. It's a lot of verses. It's like 20 verses, and it's like another 20 verses later. So bear with me, all right? <laughs> it's a lot all at one time. But um, so in Luke 1, it says, In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. I think. I don't know. <laughs> His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And then the time for the burning of the incense came. All were assembled. All the, all the assembled worshipers were outside, were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and, may, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for, for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. And after this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. And so we see this interaction that Zechariah has with this angel that shows up in his life, right? And there's some things in these verses, there's some things that we can learn from this story today. And the first one is that God wants us to trust him and not to doubt his word. Because in that moment, Zechariah was like, how can I be sure? Like, prove this to me so I can believe you, right? There was an angel standing in front of him. We can look at that and be like, what are you thinking, right? Of course, like, it's an angel. It's Gabriel of all angels, all right? What's not to believe? But then you have to remember that 400 years had gone by without... Anything that was prophesied being written 
or added to Scripture. They had not heard things from God in that way for 400 years. They had believed and they continued looking and watching and waiting and preparing for the day that their Messiah would come and the one to prepare the way for him would come for 400 years. And But God wants us in those moments when he's like, this is what you're to do. This is what the plan is, right? To trust him and not to doubt what he's saying. Because in verse 18, Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. And sometimes we hesitate. And sometimes we're like, wait, for sure, for sure? Like for reals? For real, for real? For real life, if you watch Bluey, if you have preschoolers, <laughs> for real life, right? Yes, <laughs> for real life. Um, because so, so many times we can hear something and we believe something for so long, and then when it actually comes, we're like, wait, is this for real? Like, for real, for real? Um, when I was studying for this message, I came across this in a commentary, this quote by David, ba I'm sorry, Daryl Bach. It says, sometimes underestimating God is as dangerous as rebelling against him. Our sin may not be a matter of doing overt wrong, but of being hesitant to pursue righteousness and to trust fully in the Lord. Once God speaks, we should respond. Because once God speaks something, it's truth. God is truth. And we need to take that and rearrange our life, however that's supposed to look, and respond to him. Because none of this was by chance. Ze Ze Zechariah was at the temple as a, high pr as a priest, doing his priestly duties, right? For one of his two one-week periods a year. So one of the two weeks he was there was this time. And this moment, they cast lots for who would do the, the burning of the incense because that's what they did, according to the custom, according to the way of, of the priesthood. What we see as chance, God sees as a plan and a purpose. Because what we see as, okay, it's it, it just going to be whoever it is, God knows who that is. He plans who that is. He knows it's going to be him, it's going to be this day, and Gabriel will be there to give him this message to be met with, how can I be for sure, right? Zechariah, as a priest, he studied, he knew the word, he had years in this, right? Following everything he knew that God wanted him to do throughout his life. In the midst of disappointments with no children, in the midst of so many things, he knew things. The angel said to him, right, he will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. When he heard these words... He should have known in that moment that this was really happening. Because the last time God spoke is recorded in Malachi, and he said, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. God also said at that time in chapter 4, Remember the law of my servant Moses, the, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of parents to their children and the hearts of children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. Word for word things that God had said were going to happen. And like <laughs> Zechariah, so many times we're like, wait, I've heard this before, right? And in that moment, he doubted. In that moment, he was like, I don't believe this. Is this for real? Not a, oh, this is happening. How is this happening? That's different than Zechariah in his unbelief in the moment. 
but, he wants us, but God wants us to trust him fully because Zechariah lived his life for God. He did all of the things. He did all of the duties. And it takes me to a verse in Matthew that said, not everyone, this is Jesus speaking, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Because the words here, Lord, Lord, when it says it twice, it's a personal connection, right? It, it's a personal, I have a personal close relationship with you. It's like for us nowadays when someone has a nickname for you, right? Ted calls me Steffi because he's known me since I was 15 or 16 when I babysat for his kids, right? If someone else that I haven't known very long calls me Steffi, it's weird. I'm like, why are you calling me Steffi? That's weird. <laughs> I don't know you like that. <laughs> but he can do that because we have the history. Zechariah did all of the things. He did all the things, like in these verses. Haven't we done this, this, and this? Zechariah, too. Haven't I been the priest and gone when it was my time and burned the incense when it was my time and done all the things for you when it, when it was my time? And when God brought something to him, he had unbelief. But then he, he had to deal with those consequences, right? Because not only does God want us to trust him and not doubt, Sometimes we have to deal with the consequences that come from our moment of doubt. For Zechariah, it was not talking. He couldn't talk. It's like, then you can't speak anymore right now because you're not going to speak against this and you're going to learn through this and I have growth for you <laughs> because you doubted at a moment that you shouldn't have. And so Zechariah had, you know, Nine months to think about what he'd done. <laughs> he had nine months to press into God going, this is what you said before and this is what's happening. You chose me to be the father of the one that's preparing the way for the Messiah. This is happening in my generation. He had nine months plus to, to stew on that, to marinate on it, to study that, to dig into God, right, without the distraction of conversation because he couldn't talk. <laughs> except for writing it or writing in the dirt or whatever he needed to do to talk to people back then, right? And so we fast forward to when it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they, come to circumcise, they came to circumcise the child and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, there's no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made sign to his, signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. I'm going to pause there for a second. The moment he stuck to his guns, this is what God said. No matter what you're saying, no matter what your opinion is, this is what God said. Immediately, his tongue was set free and his mouth was opened. When he spoke the truth of what was happening in this moment, right? All the neighbors were filled with awe and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard about this wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies, from the, land, from, from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies, to enable us to serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him 
all our days. And he says these things. These things are true. He is fulfilling these things in our presence. He's speaking this to the people that are around. And then he turns his, his, his attention to his baby, to his son, who's eight days old. And he starts speaking the truth of what God has said about him. And he says, and you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, which by the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in the darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel. He's speaking this to his eight-day-old son because God had told him, this is who he is. This is why he's here. And he's speaking that at eight days old. On up, right? The child grew and became strong in spirit. He became strong in spirit because obedience brings freedom and brings growth. Zechariah was obedient even after the initial unbelief. He was obedient in saying, his name is John. This is who he is. And got his voice back. You can't tell me he probably didn't grow through that season of having time, right? To grow through that season of that. And it's just this moment of like, okay, I did the things. We're now on this path. And how different that path was from what they were living in 10 months prior. When Elizabeth sends her husband off to do his priestly duty for the week, and he comes back mute. <laughs> it's like, what in the world happened? <laughs> what happened in that temple, right? He had to go nine months before they could openly, completely share with each other verbally and process this about this is the child. This is a him that has come to prepare the way. This is what's happening right now in our presence, right? And wanting to have that time and have that conversation. And now they can. And, and Elizabeth knew enough because when Mary showed up on her doorstep, she knew exactly what was going on. The baby in her womb leapt for joy, right? We can look at this story and we can be like, Zechariah was doing everything that he knew to do. And yes, he had a moment of unbelief. But he was the one chosen to raise John the Baptist. To raise him in a way that he would prepare the way for Jesus. Despite what others thought, despite all of the opinions of others, John the Baptist was an interesting person. If you read further, he, you know, wore camel's hair and ate locusts with honey and lived in the wilderness. Pretty much mountain man in our thinking, okay? <laughs> Just some guy that hung out in the wilderness and then started speaking about the coming of the Lord, right? But he raised him and spoke over his life. This is who you are and this is why you are here because we all have a purpose. John the Baptist was very visual, but we all have things that God's like, I have this for your life. This is the purpose that you have to be on this earth. Because we all have things that God has written down for us. These are why that you exist in the kingdom of God on earth in this time. And there's a reason there. And sometimes it's prayer. And sometimes it's, it's affecting the life of, of the people around you. Because sometimes we get so caught up in, I want to change the world. I want to change the world. Because you hear that all growing up. Go out and change the world. You can do all the things, right? But you got to start somewhere. you got to start with changing your world and making the difference to the thing that God calls you in in the moment. Today, tomorrow, and the next day. Walking in, in, in obedience to God and being able to live in the freedom that that brings and growing in him. Because sometimes it's like traveling up the mountain of, of growth. You want, you want to go up the mountain, right? You want to grow. And then you come to a moment like Zechariah did. <laughs> 
he'd, and he had a moment of unbelief, which he quickly turned around, right? But sometimes we come to a moment and we're like, is that for real? Is that for real life? Is it really happening? Mm, no. <laughs> and the God's like, all right, around we go. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to go around this mountain again. We're going to come back to this point. Are you going to do it this time? And he brings us to those moments because he wants us to grow and he wants us to live in the freedom that that brings in our life. And I think of this year and I think of all the transition that we've been in this year and I see the growth of our people here at Grace and I see the way that God has challenged us, the way that God has grown us in the midst of a hard thing. And just like Zechariah and Elizabeth, their life changed in a moment. Because what they understood as a life of, I'm doing all the things I want, even though I'm disappointed that, that we are unable to have children, right? And then that changes in a moment. And God's like, now is the time. What you thought of as living life differently was preparing you for living life the way that I want you to be. You had time. Because, well, let, let's be real. People without children have more time. Because children are time-consuming. <laughs> right? Zechariah had more time to spend with God. He had more time to do the things that God had called him in that season of, of his life to do. So that he would be prepared to prepare his son for what he was being prepared to do in preparing the way for Jesus. Uh, that's a lot of prepared words, but, but, you, but you can follow that. <laughs> right? If we are ready and we are prepared to do what we are called to do, then the people that we are ministering to and we are living our life with are more likely to also grow. If you're growing, you're growing the people around you because what we do with each other matters. We live this life together. We are called to live life in community, right? We, we all come to points in our life that is life-changing, and we never know when those are. We come to those moments, <laughs> and sometimes it's a, are you going to do what I want or not, and sometimes it's a good thing, and sometimes it's a struggle, and sometimes it's a blessing, but we all come to time, times in our life, and sometimes that moment makes all the difference. I can think of two specific times in my life that I know, had I chosen differently, I would not be standing here today. I can remember one of those times we were living here in town. We lived in a house. I'd gotten in some big fight with my mom over who knows what because I was like 16. So who knows? <laughs> and I had anger problems. So we got in this big blow up and I left the house and I just went walking straight down our street. Just walking this way actually. Toward here. Toward north. Okay? And I'm walking straight down. Little known to me that I was walking right by the house that we now own that we live in, that God provided for us, right? I walked right past it on that stomping, angry walk, right? And I got to these train tracks over here on Walnut Street, and I stopped. And I knew in that moment, I don't know how I knew, I just did. <laughs> God put it on my heart. You cross these tracks, or you don't come back. Will you stay, or will you go? I have things for you, but this is your moment to choose. I could have crossed those tracks and left, probably never seen my family again. Who knows? I turned my little butt around, and I went home. And I let God do all the things, and I let God do the work, and I did all the work that he wanted me to work through in my life and <laughs> allowed him to grow me in areas that I didn't really want growth in, but I need to grow thin, right? I can look back at different times in my life, not that are defining like that moment, but different times that I see. Had I done that differently, had I not obeyed in that season, I wouldn't be standing in front of you today in this spot. I didn't know as a 15-year-old that God saying, hey, go to youth group there with all those kids that you think are weird and leave your youth group with all your friends because you're supposed to be there. I was 15. I was just like, do I have to do that? And I drug my feet for a few weeks. 
I'm like, I don't want to go there. Those kids are weird. I like my nice, safe youth group with all my buddies. I just want to stay here, right? <laughs> Little did I know, you know, 24 years later, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> and I will have poor, preached 14 sermons this year. And back then I would have been like, uh, no, I don't, I don't do that. I don't, I don't do those things. And God's like, no, you don't now, but you will. But you have to go through this and this and this and grow in this area and all these things, which would have overwhelmed my brain back then. I'm just like, I'm just going to do what you want. I knew he'd called me to something. I didn't know what it was then. I just knew that I needed to listen. And I needed to take the next step in what he was calling me to do. And here we are right? And so we can look over our lives and see the way that God has grown us in different things and grown us through things, through good things, through hard things, through so many things. He uses all the things to grow us and to have us walk in obedience because he wants us to walk in obedience today. If we walk in full obedience today, we'll, we'll be where we're supposed to be tomorrow or at least a little closer. But if we do it the next day and the day after that and the day after that and the day after that, and eventually, we're, we're, we, we, we will know that we know that we know that I am in the exact place that God wants me to be in this moment, because I have been obedient in all that he has called me to. And I know that I'm in the middle of this, right? And, 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 and I think of this season that we're in right now, and we've had this year, we've had six months of transition, right? Four weeks, guys. <laughs> we can make it. <laughs> But we've been in this season, and I can, and I'm just so excited for what God has. And I was working on this message, and I was thinking about John the Baptist and how he prepared the way, and how God calls people into our life to prepare the way for us for the way that God wants us to grow. And I and I'm thinking about this series, and I'm thinking about my life, and I'm thinking about Pastor Dave and Jennifer, and all of the things just running around my brain all the time, right? <laughs> And I'm just like, it's going to be so exciting to see the purposes that he has for them here to grow us in ways that we haven't yet, to affect our life, to propel each other forward, right? To encourage one another in love and good deeds, like it says in scripture, to bring their giftings here because God knew that they'd be here in this season and making sure that my heart is prepared to learn from them. Because we know that God has called them to this place. And, and they'll be here for a purpose. And we will learn from them, and they will encourage us, and they will grow us. God will grow us through them. And in the end, it's exciting. But we need to remember to trust him, to trust God with what he's been doing, what he is doing. To deal with things if we don't handle it right. And continue to walk in obedience and to grow and live in the freedom that we have in him. And so I want us to think about that, about, uh, about these things this week and just to reflect on them and just think about, it, I, am I ready? Am I trusting God today with the things that he has called to me in my life right now? Whatever I know God has been speaking to me, this is your path. Am I trusting him or am I doubting him? Am I trusting him and am I following him? And doing the things that he's called me to do? Or am I in the middle of dealing with the consequences of not? And sometimes that's timing. Zechariah had to wait nine months. Why nine months? Who knows? But he made it. And sometimes it's a point of, this was wrong. Please forgive me. I repent of this. I turn away. This is not the way I'm, li I'm, li I'm living my life. I'm going this way with you, and that's it. Sometimes we're in those moments, and sometimes it's like, no, we're on the path. We're on the path. I trust you, and you're on it, and I just need to walk it. Hard, easy, uncomfortable, whatever that means, <laughs> for wherever you're at, because God knows where you're at. He always knows us right where we are. And he knows what, 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 what we can take. And he knows what we can't. And he'll push us to the edge of what we know we can't. Because he wants us to grow. Because he wants us to grow.
Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for bringing us here today. I thank you so much that you have the master plan, that you know exactly what you're doing, that you know exactly the plan that you have for each and every one of us in our individual lives and the things that you have called us to, that you would open our eyes and ears to be able to hear you and, and to sense you, Holy Spirit, to how you are leading and directing us, that you will remind us of the things that God has said to us, remind us of the things that God has put in our hearts, remind us of what he's told us in the past that is still in place for us to walk in. Jesus, I just thank you. Once again, I think of it so much in this season. Thank you for leaving <laughs> the power and the glory that you had in heaven to come down to earth as a dependent on humans. And I just thank you so much for that risky move in our minds, but that planned move in yours. Holy Spirit, that you would just lead and guide us this week, that we would be listening for you in the way that you are leading us, that we would walk in obedience today and tomorrow and all week, that, that we would just walk in obedience to what you are calling us to in the everyday little, little things and in the life-changing things and everything in between. I just thank you for your continued presence with us. I thank you for being here with us this morning. I thank you for everyone that is here, that is hearing my voice. I thank you for the blessing they are to us here at Grace, as individuals, as families, as this town and this community. I just thank you so much for them, whether this is the first time hearing or, or, where, or, or whether they've been here forever. They are a blessing to us today. In Jesus' name, amen.